Hi, everybody who's on. I'm Kim. Hi. Okay, let's see. Usually takes a few minutes for everybody to sign in. Hi, Kevin. Hi there, Kim. How are you? You well? Yep, thank God. It was very, really, really hot the last few days in Jerusalem and now it's, it's gone freezing again. Crazy. Hold on. Hold on a second, admit. Hey, Wayne. Oh, hold on, I'm just getting people in. Okay. Hi, Liron and Sarah. Giving everybody some time to come on. Hi, Kim. Hi, hi, everybody. Hold on one second. Emma. Ah, the Mazoras are here. Hi. Look, he's there. I'm looking at like Liron. You know, you look just like this guy. No, Liron. <laughs> Very good. Are you the Rab Liron from South Africa? They always talk about. Mm. Yes, I am. Nice to meet you. Do you need Very any good. <laughs> Good lockdown's been good for you. <laughs> uh, I can't swear online. <laughs> yes, is Janet online? Janet? Not yet. Okay. Janet's here yet? Okay. Give it a few more minutes. We had a bit of conflict with scheduling today because there were some other meetings that were taking place that some people had already committed to. So I'm just gonna give it a few more minutes. Hi, Ethan. Hey, how's it going, Kim? Good, thank God. Glad to hear. We'll give it a few more minutes and we'll start. Give it about one or two more minutes. Sounds great. Got to remember to let people in here. Hello. Hi. Hi, Kim. How are you? Good. Are you Janet? Yes, I'm Janet. Oh, okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. I'm just taking time to get on from my computer, so I've just got it on on my phone for now, and I'll no be problem. in the. No problem. No okay. problem. Okay. I think we're going to start in about one minute. Okay. Yeah, I can see Sarah and Lerona here and Javi and Naftali. Let me just check. There's a, quite a few people, unfortunately, that just, we had a scheduling conflict of like, okay. uh, who wanted to come on and there was a, I'm not sure, hold on, what happened? Admit. Loads of South Africans on this, I think. Okay, Yoffi, everyone's welcome. <laughs> we like South Africans. Okay. Um, I'm not going to, I think if everybody could just, I'm not going to mute you because the last time I forgot to unmute people. So I don't want to do that. I just asked everybody to be respectful while other people are talking. And um, let me just make sure I'm not letting everybody in.
Um, for those of you, this is, I think, the third time we are meeting. The whole initiative behind this approach was that, as for some of you who know me and some of you don't, I work in Jerusalem, and I've been a broker for about 10 years, mostly selling in the upper high-end luxury market in Jerusalem. However, I have sold all different kinds of real estate all over Jerusalem. And I'm a person who has a lot of connections and in various different industries, and I work with a lot of different people. And um, hold on one second, my son just walked in the door. Benjamin. He says he feels like he's going to throw up. Just give me one minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> hold on one second, everybody. Hold on. Hold on. Come with me. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, uh, okay, great, I'm back. Okay, so um, I was just going back. The reason I started doing this is because I'm connected with a lot of different people and lots of different things that I do. And everybody was saying, you know, over the coronavirus in the last two or three months that they really, really wanted to make Aliyah and they really want to come and they're looking for affordable places to come to in Israel. So I started investigating different communities and a lot of people had requests different places to go. So I'm learning about different communities all over Israel as well. And um, Talmond has been a big one because a lot of people asked me um, to please look into the community and there were lots of South Africans. And Americans. So that's what, you know, we, we, we did a, a frat last week and maybe next week, I'm not sure we'll do Renana or we'll do Modin or we'll do other communities. I'm not sure yet. And um, after speaking to so many great people in Talmont, I'm like, I should move to Talmont. It sounds absolutely amazing. So um, the idea is to speak to people on the ground, people who are living there, the actual community. It's not a platform to solicit anything to do with real estate. If this, is, if this community sounds like something that is good for you, then I will connect you with the necessary people who are involved in uh, renting or selling properties and developers as well in those locations. This is purely for information to ask the locals about the community, school, transport, whatever you want, whatever you want, what kind of community it is. So I'm going to start off with Janet. And uh, Janet, why don't you just introduce yourself to everybody and explain okay. you know, what your family or whatever, just, just tell us who you are. Okay, with pleasure. Hi, so my name's Janet. My husband's actually in a shira, so I apologize that he can't join tonight. Um, we made Aliyah almost nine years ago now from Melbourne in Australia. We'd also lived in London for several years previously. Um, and we were, um, when we came to Israel, we were looking for a place with a community, but to be honest, we moved here because my husband had a brother who was living in the area and we didn't know much about it. Um, and I say to people, everyone like kind of blessed us that we should have an easy absorption into Israel. And I think for us, um, you know, happening to land in Talmond was the biggest bracha for us because we straight away landed into an absolutely beautiful place in Israel and a beautiful community in Israel. Um, Talmond feels a little bit rural by Israel standards in terms of it's got a lot of greenery around it. We're surrounded by um, lovely little moshavim. There's Kfar Hes, um, Erut, Mishmeret and Bered um, around us. But when you're actually inside, um, it feels a little bit like a South African suburb. So I've been told, I haven't been to Joburg myself, but um, one of the initial property developers of the area where most of the Datila or Mi community live was actually um, built by South African um, people so they kind of you know developed it with lots of greenery houses with gardens um, and yeah and then in terms of the community overall there's about I think the latest statistics I heard was there's about 11,000 people living in Tilmond um, there's a few big developments going on so when that's finished I think the aim is that there's going to be about 14 to 15,000 residents of Tilmond um, it's a very mixed community. It's mixed in terms of level of religiousness. Um, it's mixed in terms of Sephardi, Ashkenazi. Um, so if you're looking for sort of a more uniform um, community in Israel, you know, like the, you know, Alonshfut or Chashmona, um, places like that, it's much more diverse. 
Um, but if you're looking for a diverse community, then I think it's a really beautiful example. Um, the main Anglo community, the main kind of shul where the Anglos daven is also actually mixed Sephardi Ashkenazi. So we daven Nusach Sephard, sometimes they'll occasionally take out a Sephardi Sefer Torah or like this Shabbat, for example, we have our outdoor minyanim at the moment. Um, the person was laning with the Sephardi trot, but um, you know, a lot of the time it's Ashkenazi, which um, for me personally, growing up in a mixed family where my father was from Egypt um, and my mother's an Ashkenazi, it was a beautiful place to kind of find myself in Israel and actually seeing who's coming and living together and kind of this um, merging, I guess, of traditions again in Eretz Israel. Um, in terms of, and also in terms of mixed community, it's also very Anglo and Israeli. Um, so there's one local religious primary school, um, which is, there's a growing number of Anglo-based um, kids there, um, but it's all very much of Israeli so a lot of teachers and parents who don't speak English, um, but there's not enough English speakers who will be able to help. We're losing you a bit. Your connection, I don't know, it's going a little bit... Hold on. I don't know. I didn't hear the last bit. Did everybody... I don't know if you heard. I don't know what you okay. just said. We didn't hear in, it. Terms of, in terms of the school here, um, for primary school, there's a religious um, primary school in the area, um, which is a very mixed Israeli-Anglo type school. Um, and then for high school, most of the um, people from the community tend to send their kids out of Telmond. There is one big high school here. Apparently, it's actually one of the biggest high schools in um, Israel, but it's not a religious high school. So there are some religious kids who go there, um, but most of the kids go outside. So there's a few different schools in Ranana. My daughter goes to a school in Herzliya, um, and there's um, buses that take the kids there. Um, and then I'll be happy to answer questions. Okay. Thank you so much, Janet. I'm going to also now hand over the floor to uh, the Bernsteins. The Bernsteins recently, what, two months ago? How long did you make? When did you come to Talmont? At the beginning of January, actually. So, okay. and, and we came from South Africa, even though you'll notice a bit more of an Australian accent from me. Um, I, made, I made Aliyah quite a long time ago and lived in Jerusalem. We met each other in Jerusalem and we started our family in near, actually just outside of Efrat in a little caravilla. Um, then we went to South Africa. We were there for seven years. I can see a lot of um, very familiar, friendly, friendly names. So we're, we're in good company over here. And yeah, we arrived in January to Tel Mons, and we we could probably speak more, you know, less on the numbers. Janet, you've got the numbers, yeah. you know. I learned a lot just from the you. Can you see from another angle that I'm just into the sinks? Growing. But um, maybe even just from the way the community have, have welcomed us in, and um, you know. The, 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 our choice to come to Telmond, I suppose, as well. Um, do you want to talk about that? Um, so, so yes, it's great to see everybody, lots of people that we know, and uh, Kim and I have uh, recently found a common connection through family. Um, I think, uh, I think for me, I, you know, I was thinking ahead of this call, how I would describe Talmud, and I think it's um, extraordinary, uh, you know, relative to Israeli communities and uh, different places around the uh, around the map. Yeah, I think it's it's extraordinarily normal, I would say. You know, it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 you know, I was joking with, uh, I thought of an anecdote this morning when I was, uh, I was, you know, we were dabbling in the outside community and um, out, outdoor community rather. And uh, I said to the rabbi afterwards, he's been dabbling in a different minion. We're dabbling in a minion in our, in our road, just a block away from the shul. And uh, there were, you know, the, the, the chilonim uh, driving through, uh, through, through in the middle of the minyan. And I said to the rabbi this morning, it's so nice to see some of the chilonim here coming to shul. Um, you know, they haven't been to shul for so long because they drive through and then all the, all the religious people make such an effort to wave at them. They wave back. Uh, there was a nice moment in the first time Janet was there as well on, on the first minyan on Friday night where one of, uh, um, one of the guys who I'd seen, you know, a little bit uh, in shul because unfortunately his, I think his mom had passed away and he, and he had your type, but, he, but he was a, he's, a, he's a secular guy. He was walking his dog on Friday night. He walked through the minyan. Um, he realized there was a bit of time till the end. So he quickly ran home, got rid of the dog, changed his shirt, and he came and he said Kaddish. 
So, so uh, you know, that, that's not what happens at every minion. It is a magical place. But, uh, but, but that, I think, is quite indicative of, of, of the space and the relationship um, between the religious and the non-religious. And, and I think that spectrum of, of normal, you, you know, if I'm used to that launch foot, you know, that Janet uh, spoke about. I spent most of, uh, I spent seven, you know, how long? How long? Seven years in learning in Israel and in Yeshivot. Um, I know Efrat very well. I know, um, I know the Gush very well. And uh, Malia Dumim, we lived for three months. We, we, we live in Yerushalayim. And I think, um, you know, our, our regular experience of, of an Israeli uh, living experience is very much that, you know, that sort of generic, you know, the word you used was that uniform space. And, uh, and this is not that, you know, when we drive into school, we're seeing all different types of people dressed very differently and interesting things. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cause for good and healthy conversation with our children. And um, I would think, you know, if, if that's the angle that we're addressing now in terms of the Yiddishkeit, it really is about um, that, that, it's, that you get to choose, right? So that you're not going to, you're not going to choose to live a religious life on some level because that's just the cultural norm. Um, you're going to do that because you know because because you choose and because you step into that space. So I think depending on what your family values are, the way you educate your children, it gives you that opportunity to actually choose to step into it and have those conversations, um, as opposed to you know maybe the benefit you get from being in a in a more uniform community. That's just the way that things are done. Um, but the benefit of this is that you know in those in those critical times you get to have those conversations and how you get there. So. You know, I would say that's leaning towards more that style of, um, of of bringing up a family in that space. For us, the other huge attraction is space. Um, just breathing the air. Janet spoke about the beautiful Yishuvim. Um, I think on our Shlichut in South Africa, I spent most of the time sitting behind a desk, as many of the people on the other side of this call know. Um, and I ran a school, but I didn't run much at all. Um, and here I've just like suddenly found the spirit of running and I'm running, you know, five Ks, 10 Ks, uh, this, you know, this morning because, because you just feel this absolute love of, uh, of, of the beauty of the land and just the, the spirits of the people and, and all the different uh, beautiful elements around and, you know, the farm area and that sort of thing. So I think we want to do, we want to just breathe in the beauty of Eretz Israel, the beauty of the people, the diversity, and, and it's been a, a dream for us. You go for a walk in Tel Mond, you just meet besides for, well, you know, friendly faces, a lot of a lot of people walking their dogs and, you know, on their normal routes, they're passing each other. So faces become very familiar. So even though you're separated in your your rather larger homes, you're meeting each other on the street all the time. Um, everywhere you go, there's fruit trees. So it was beautiful as we arrived in winter to, uh, in our garden, there were lemons, lemon trees, uh, orange trees, just full in full bloom. There were um, uh, nachis as well. Uh, I'm trying to think, mandarins in Australia, Clementina in Israel, lots of names for that fruit. And and now we're all, uh, the mango trees are starting to to bloom and we've got these little ma mini mangoes coming and nectarines in the front. It's just um, like for me, that was, you really living and you're seeing the fruits of Israel in your own garden. I mean, there's not many places that you could have that kind of miracle right in front of your eyes and if we talk about educational messages for your children i think that's a big one is you feel like you're living you're living in luxury and yet you're living a bit of a farmer's life and that you can grow your own fruit trees and you know, everybody has their vegetable patches or whatever they have you know, can I ask the question too. that a lot of people i don't know who else is from telmont janet meant to be on the call so hopefully she'll join <laughs> In terms of education, I know we spoke, Janet, about this before, but tell me a little bit about, like, the opportunities for kindergartens, for elementary school. Um, it, I know that Renana is, like, what, 10 minutes away? How far, like, Give me the, pro like, where is everything? Renana's about 10 kilometres, um, 10 kilometres south. I don't know how well people know. I think about kind of center strip. If you start up along the coast. You're fading, you're fading out, Janet. I don't know what's going on. Sorry. It's okay. Is this better? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, if you're kind of moving north from Tel Aviv, Ranana, and then about 10 minutes or 10 kilometers north of Ranana is Tel um, Unfortunately, for, for those of you who visit, 
traffic is terrible in Israel. So when there's no traffic, which you know, does happen for several times a day, only about 10, 15 minutes drive between and um, Telmond. Unfortunately, if it's peak traffic, it can take sometimes half miserable traffic an hour between the two places. Um, but usually, you know, kids or people who need to get to places for work will just time their commute so that they don't get caught in the bad time zone. Are there buses? Um, Are there buses that go from Telmond to Nana? One of the things to, I guess, you know, to, you know, some of the sort of honest, you know, kind of draw back from a place like Telmond that we were told or, you know, to take into account, I guess, if you're trying to work out, you know, your finances if you do move to a place like Telmond. Most people said to us, and I think they're right, ideally you really need two cars um, if you've got a family because the pub, there is public transport in Telmond. It isn't great. Um, thank God we have a really big community here and... Somebody described Telmond as being very kahilat here, even aside from our religious kahila, just in terms of the whole place of Telmond, there's a real sense of community. So we have WhatsApp groups and for people who are looking for a ride to the train station or to Rana, people are constantly posting, is anyone going here or there? And people ride. Um, so there is public transport, but it's definitely not as regular as if you were in a city like, you know, Yerushalayim or Ranana or Natanya. Um, so that is one factor to take into account. Um, but there are public buses. There's um, a big, we're about five minutes from a place called Summit Drawer, um, which is kind of like a major interchange between Ranana and Natanya. And then most of the buses go there. And if you can't get a bus to where you need to go from there, there's buses everywhere to Haifa, Natanya, Yerushalayim. Um, so, you know, five minutes out of Telmon, there's a bus stop. And then there's a bus that goes directly from there all the way to Yerushalayim. Um, and about 10 minutes from Telmon, there's a, train station, Bet Yoshua, and there's trains there to Tel Aviv, up north. Now, thank God, a few months ago, they've opened up a fantastic train line to Yerushalayim as well that runs from Tel Aviv. So now, end to end, I can get to Yerushalayim in an hour and a half on a very comfortable train, um, and there's Wi-Fi all the way. So it's, um, you know, if you're driving to Yerushalayim, it's about an hour and a half from here. Terrible. Right. And talking about schools and Ghanim. So there's lots of Ghanim for little kids. There's lots of private Ghanim when they're really young. And then when they open when they get to the public um, when they get to the public school system, um, there's several Dati Ghanim. Um, there's kind of one for the young age. At the moment I think there's two. Again, they play it by numbers. So um, if the numbers grow, they open up more classes. So um, for the kind of they call it Tromchova and Trom and Ganchova. There's two um, Dati Ganim. Um, and then by the time you get to Kita Aleph, there's, I think there's three Kita Aleph classes at the moment um, in the Dati school. Oh, there's two. Sorry, my daughter's calling out. There's two, two from upstairs. Um, so some of the classes have three, some of the classes have two. And also, thank goodness, a couple of years ago, they changed the laws. Again, this might change again, just depending on the Minister of Education. Um, but they've changed the laws. So the classes, oh, the yeah. younger classes, Actually have less kids. One of the terrible things about Israel that we struggled with when we first moved here was my son going into a class of 36 children. Yeah. Um, thank goodness now, if you've got younger children, they're going into much smaller classes. Um, again, I'm not, I can't say what that will be based on new Ministry of Education rules, but um, the education is something that's difficult in Israel, but I think it's difficult across the board. I think kids, you know, you need to be very patient. They take time to acclimatise until still in time to kind of find his place. Um, but I think as long as you just leave some time to kind of be there and, you know, support your kids, remind your kids that they've got a loving, supportive home um, to be in. And I can see Javi's joined our call. Javi was one of the fabulous yes. teachers who brought love and kindness and warmth um, to our family when we moved here. Javi was my daughter's first English teacher um, when we moved to Tomon. Maybe... Sorry, just because Javi's joined the call, maybe I'll let her give a couple of... Yeah, I'm sorry I came on a little late. Um, I just I got distracted with the time. I'm sorry about that. No problem. <laughs> Hi, Javi. Can you introduce yourself and just say how long you've lived in Talmud for? And Sure. Okay. Just... My name is Javi Tilson, and I came from New York, Muncie, New York. And I don't know. I, where are you from? I'm sorry. I just came on, so... Oh, I'm South African, and I'm Kim, and I live in Jerusalem. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I came. If you if you're familiar with, uh, you know, in America, New York, Muncie, New York, it's, it's a very um, suburbia as well. And that I see Talmond as 
a much tinier suburbia, but suburbia as well. But um, I came, it's nearly 12 years, 12 years ago. I have uh, three sons. Um, two sons live in Poleg, 10 minutes away from here on the beach, which is beautiful. They're married and I have four grandkids. And thank God. And, uh, and I have one son who is uh, 25 and now is living in Herzliya and going to IDC, which is an international uh, university here, well accredited and very happy there and working and this and that. He's still single. And um, when we first came, he was only 13 years old. It was 12 years ago. And we, we came to Telmon by chance. It was just like one of those fortuitous things where we, my oldest son was here first. He was a Chayabo dead. We wanted to visit often. So we were looking for a place that was more affordable, which I think it still is. Tamond is like one of these, like, it's like a nice secret because it's a beautiful place. We call it our peaceful retreat because it's not like in the hubbub of other places. Like, you know, if you ask, I don't know from your circle of friends, whatever, but in New York, people know about Yerushalayim. They heard about Tel Aviv. <laughs> and 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 they other than that, for some weird reason everyone knows about Renata. That's it. Like those are you know the big the big threes. Of course, people heard about Haifa. Nobody lives there. People hear about this or that, but it's not as not in New York. I mean, that's the buzz. So here, someone told us, you know, there's this very nice place, Salmond, and described what it was. And we said, but what could that be? It's just, I guess, like even in South Africa, I don't know anything about, you just hear the main places, you know? But the best secrets are the ones that are not, you know, like the, the ones that the Israelis know about, not the ones that the outside of, you know, outside of Israel know about. So anyhow, we, we ended up looking around here and what we needed for our purposes at that time was just a big Knesset and, uh, you know, somewhere to put our bags down when we came to visit for my Chayal Boded son. And it was this small, sleepy town, but it was just the right, you know, it was, it was fine. But it's grown so much. And the beauty has stayed, it, the, the quiet, the peacefulness, but yet a lot of social, you, you can socialize as much or as little as you want. That's a nice thing, because it's spread out in such a way that you have your privacy, but yet, if you don't want your privacy, then you can join everybody else. Like Jan I, I came in when Janet was mentioning the WhatsApp group. It's a, it's a great WhatsApp group. So if you like these WhatsApp groups, you can be part of it and be very active or not active on it. Nobody's pointing a finger, no one's asking you, but it's very informative from silly things to important things. Um, and it does make you feel like you have an ear or a buzz on things, whether you want or not. My positioning now is like I said, I came with, um, three sons, but the, 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 the top ones were, you know, older already. My oldest son was again in the army already. And soon to be, when we moved, he was mad, just got married. And the next one was in yeshiva, you know, his gap year. And the third one was the only one that I had to deal with. And there are no uh, religious high schools in Telmond itself. Um, so we shipped him to Renana and, um, I found it's, it's, it's all like, like what Janet was saying about the uh, transportation. Yes, you do. I think you need a car. But like anything else in life, if you don't have one, maybe you could work it out without. I mean, there were times when my son wanted to get together with his friends and he worked it out. He, he took that random bus that connected to another one. And if I didn't take him myself, but he worked it out. And there was trains to get to wherever you want to go and this and that. But it's all, you know, you don't have to... Um, follow what everyone says you know some people say oh it's impossible this and that no yet yeah, you can live here and yet be part of as much as you want you don't have to live in Ranana to be part of Ranana we were very much part of whatever we wanted to be part of and it's, right now we're we're very involved in the shul here my, my husband happens to be the candy man and <laughs> but you know uh you know with davening and everything and yet our kids live in Netanya and we're very involved in the shul there. We belong, we, we actually belong to two shuls and uh, go back and forth and we enjoy both. We enjoy the, the city like of Poleg and we enjoy the suburbia of, of uh, you know, Telmont. We go to the beach 
whenever we can on every Friday, which is nice. And the beach is like, there's parts where it's crowded and there's parts where it's very private. And it's, it's like a dream. I don't know about from South Africa, but from New York to, on a Friday afternoon to be at the beach is insane. <laughs> and then be home in 10 minutes, ready for Shabbos and still having a beautiful Shabbos. That's, that's like, that's Ghana Eden. And, um, and there's a lot of things as well. I mean, uh, it's, you're close, if you like sports, it's tennis and basketball and all kinds of things. And if you like, uh, my, my husband's getting a smicha, so he's getting a smicha in Renana. And uh, so he's also very busy with that. And, and, um, and I'm a teacher, so I've gotten to know the community also through my tutoring. And, and there's an American school nearby, so I was very involved in that too. So there's really so much opportunity. I mean, right now, Israel is, so exciting as it is because it's just constantly developing. Um, there are, of course, you'll always hear, you come from outside of Israel and you'll hear Israelis say, what, you moved here? But it's so hard. They don't even know what hard is. <laughs> they really don't. Because they know what hard is because of, you know, of course, you know, there were all these things with, you know, of course, building the country, wars and everything. But now living in Israel, it's like, it's, it's like we're so lucky. I mean, they built the, the country and it's just at a point where it's just getting so, so exciting just to build it more. Whoever has good ideas, whether it's for the education system or for computers or whatever, it's just so much. That's, there's so question, much to be involved in. Question to everybody, I mean, those who are, what are people generally, are, are people working in Talmud or they commuting? What's going on in terms of what do you do for a living? That kind of stuff. At the moment, everybody's working from home. <laughs> I know that. Okay. In, 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 our, in the big basements and all the, you know, in, there's been space. It's actually been a, a lifesaver at this time to have the space because uh, I think I think a lot of people will continue working from home. But uh, people are commuting. As, 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 someone living, as someone living in a two-bedroom with a one-and-a-half-year-old in Tel Aviv, I can imagine that's been a lifesaver. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> yeah. I worked the first year I was working for a law in Tel Aviv, and so I used to commute to Tel Aviv every day. I would drive to the station, park my car, and catch a train to Tel Aviv. Um, my husband was working in Ramat. He's worked since we've been here. He's worked in Ramat Hasharon, which is um, north Tel Aviv. Sorry, Ramat Achaya, which is north Tel Aviv, Holon, which is south Tel Aviv, and Herzliya. Um, and so we've yeah we've lived and worked in different parts. Some of the times we've commuted. Some of the times we've caught trains. Um, and recent, more recently, I've kind of been working partly from home and partly um, sort of travelling around the country, depending on where I need to be. So I think there's, and there's people who live in, who work in Haifa, there's people who work from home. I think there's really all combinations. Yeah, now. everywhere. I think it well, must be so well, close well, to the train line, it really gives the opportunity for people to work, you know, all the way up, all the way down, or not all the way down. What is, what is, what is that commute to Tel Aviv like? Um, it's... Janet, oh. can't hear you. Janet, you can't hear you. Hold on. You mute yourself. Hold on. Is better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. I think it's it's basically about an hour maximum end to end. Um, sometimes it can be half an hour if you time it exactly right and yeah. you don't get thirty five minutes tops, I think, if if it's at the right time. Some people make yeah. their hours just so that they don't have to commute so much. That's that's mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. If you leave at the wrong time, if you leave at the wrong time, it's a while. If you leave at the right time, it could be 30, right. 35 minutes. Yeah. Not the end of the world. Exactly. Yeah, so it, it's basically 10 minutes drive to the train station and then about 20 minutes on the train. Um, but obviously, mm -hmm. you know, by the time you park the car, walk to the train and, you know, hopefully everything runs on time. The truth is, the train, uh, personally comparing it to Australia, I actually found the commute here better. Um, the only thing I dream is the day when we have a proper bike track between here and the train station, and then I'd be riding to the train station. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll ask another do. question. I'll ask another question if that's okay. Uh, the average age, and not even necessarily the average age, but the trend is the trend that the community is getting older, or that the community is getting younger in Telmon. It's actually oh, getting both. I think it's both becoming both. Yeah. I think we, the we're, we're an example of both ways, Janet, because we've we're we've moved here and my parents are building in Telmond, so they hope to mm. be making Aliyah from Australia, retiring and coming to Telmond. Mm. So 
you know, in terms of that, I, I've been hearing a bit more about that. People who, you know, a, a lot of people would retire to Netanya, but, but those people who want to continue having their grandchildren in their home and have, have that space for it, as well as maintaining that community, I think uh, Telmond is a very good option for them as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I may add, there's another interesting part is that um, there's no ageism here. You, it's, it's a weird thing, but like I'm on the older spectrum. I have grandkids and, and everything. And I would say most of my friends are much younger. And it, it's just interesting. I just, there's no, it just fell, fell in it. Because when you come to Eretz and everyone has this common goal it's not just about the age obviously you want people that have also little kids to play with your little kids you have plenty of that but it's a real mix Jana, do you agree like we uh, uh, the age uh, completely. Javi, Hani, I'm gonna send you to America Javi. I'm gonna send you to I'm gonna send you to America to talk to my family you're very inspiring yeah person I, 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 unfortunately, I lost, you, you wouldn't believe it, but I, I lost my mom this year, and she was incredibly oh, positive force. She was incredible positive force. So I just try to keep her legacy going. But the wow. truth is, I'm not lying. I'm a bit, like, I, you don't know me, but I'm honest. And there's so much greatness to see here. And once you open your eyes to see it, it just doesn't stop. It's just so, it's, there's fun, there's excitement, there's people, there's values, there's, it's just everything. And um, one of the biggest things was my, out of my three sons, my middle son, he was still stuck on staying in New York. And um, my husband said, don't force him because he was already like, nine, you know, uh, almost 20 at the time. And uh, against my best wishes, I didn't force him. But he went through IDC, he got a great job in New York City not six months later, after living in Israel for a number of years, he called me and he said, Mom, I thought I wanted to live here. I could never, ever live again out of Eretz Israel. It's so yeah. amazing. So it's just really about, you know, being a tourist here and hearing, you know, things so different than actually living it and grabbing it by the horns. It's such a source to live here. It's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. It really is. I, I, I am not missing where it's just, I, I you know, Anywhere, if you think about it, like I used to even, I'll uh, be honest, I wasn't that person uh, that was big. I, I grew up in a Zionistic school and everything, but I, I, you know, I was happy where I was. My husband always wanted to move. But um, the normal things that go wrong, like, you know, you call a telephone company, you can't get through, it's annoying, they, you're American, you know, all these like negative things. But then I thought about it. And I talked to my friends. I never had a problem with a telephone company in America, of course. Never had a problem with a bank in America, of course. But um, but you're in Israel, so whatever the problems are, you know, they're, you're building something. When you, you have a problem in America, I, where are you from? I'm sorry, I don't know where you where are you Chicago. from. Chicago, Chicago. I live in Tel Aviv now. I've been here for okay. seven years. So but, yeah. when you have a problem in Chicago, like okay, like what are you building there? You're helping Chicago get better. <laughs> Like, who cares? <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. 100%. Okay, somebody is trying also to come from Brooklyn. She's making Aliyah this summer, Zohar. So I will write her to come in. She couldn't come in. Okay, no problem. Okay. Does anybody, I want to open it up to the floor. Is anybody got questions? Um, Wayne, about schools? Anybody want to talk? Him? Hi, who's that? Hi, hi, hi Ilan Lazarus here. Yeah. Oh, hi, Ilan. Um, how are you? Good. Can I please ask Sarah and Liron um, a question? So, Sarah, firstly, how's Yehuda fitting in um, from a language perspective? Um, and also, are there any schools like Yeshiva College, like either in Telmond or... No, I can say so um, you have to remember that we arrived and, you know, the day after we arrived, we sent our kids to Ortara, the um, religious municip municipal school in, in Telmont, and they came out with big smiles on their faces. And very soon after, we went into lockdown. So their kind of acc acclimatization into Israel was put on hold with that. Um, you know, Yehuda went in with a lot of confidence. 
and you know he i think each grade is very is very different in in terms of its makeup whereas my 10 year old there's you know there there are a few anglo girls in his class but there aren't really any anglo boys in his class and you know very quickly he was bringing home very israeli israeli boys that didn't speak a word of english and somehow they 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 speaking a safatso uh, kad, kadoregel that's what they were calling it like a soccer, soccer language so mm -hmm. they were actually were it was it was quite amazing to see the development just because they find what they have in common um with Eliana, who's who's uh, eight years old, she's in Kitabet. She's got a lot of Anglo girls in her class, so I think socially it's a lot easier for her. And um, for Yehuda, it's definitely there's that there is that culture shock of you're you're really in an Israeli school. You're not you're not in a very Anglo school. It's it's you know the Anglo's are fitting in with the Israelis, which is you know what something that we particularly wanted is to be in a, a very Israeli society to be part to you know to feel that we were those ones coming in and learning how to be be a certain way and and to be influenced by that israeli culture as well which uh for, for what we've seen is a very beautiful one around us very traditional people and really salt of the earth kind of feel to to the people around you um obviously they're the 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 sons and daughters and grandchildren of farmers so there is that very laid back nature to Tomond. And uh, I think the children, you just see them walking on the, on the walking, walking to school, walking home. You know, when I let Yehuda and Eliana start to walk home together on their own, the you know, I, I sat there biting my, biting my nails and they came home. They were like on top of the world. I mean, the freedom for them and the confidence that it gave them, it was, it was, it was pretty incredible. Yeah, um, Liran had to go to another meeting. Sorry, but um, in terms of if, if there's a school like like a Yeshiva College, um, well, I think we're supposed to say that there is no school like Yeshiva College. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we we were very uh, worked very closely with Yeshiva College in South Africa, um, but no, I, I don't think there is a school like Yeshiva College in in Israel. Um, in saying that there are a lot of different types of schools. There are, there are schools that are, are smaller and, and feel more like a family. Then there are bigger schools um, that, you know, they're, they're divided into many grades. Um, there, there are schools that are more equipped for Olim and, and schools that don't have any, you know, um, Olim kind of integration or, or pan necessarily. But what I found is there are a lot of, of options um, and living in, Telmond doesn't mean that you're only stuck with Telmond. If you want to go somewhere that's outside of Telmond, you get the bus comes and will pick up your child. And um, you know th there are other options available. Um, I'm not the best one to speak to in terms of what those options are, but they are there. And uh, you know you hear a lot of people. These ones send their kids here. These ones get, send their kids to Ranana or to Hoda Sharon or to Natanya even. Um, so, so there are different options, but, but you, you won't find Yeshiva College. No, you won't Great, find thanks, that. Sarah. Can I just yeah. add something? I think it's very important that, I mean, I grew up in South Africa and I lived in New York and Manhattan, first of all. And I think that Aliyah, a lot of times we always, we've got to reframe the experience because you're never going to find what you have back in New York, wherever it is, we have America, Australia, it's a different, it's, right. a, re, it's a reprogramming. And, you know, we all miss that kind of whatever we grew up in. But at the same time, there's so much more that, you know, your kids are growing up amongst Jews, amongst people, you know, like-minded people, you're building the country, as Javi said. Um, you know, I was, if you ask me, being a secular Jew living in South Africa, if I'd ever live in Israel, I came here when I was 18 to a kibbutz. I never in my wildest dreams did I think I'd live in Israel. And I didn't like the culture or the people. And Hashem has, you know, a great sense of humor. But I'm just saying, you never know where it's going to be. But I would never, and I, I really feel it. And, and, and sometimes people get upset with me for saying this. Um, but I really feel with this whole corona and everything that's going down that this is the only place that we should be and i feel it very very strongly and i can tell you in the real estate market the prices 
are not going down, okay? I, it's like this big, I've just got to admit some more people onto the call because everybody's been calling me saying, Kim, we need good deals. We need good deals. What good deals? The prices, the market is so strong. I mean, it, it's unbelievable, the demand. People in America saying, we've got to get our money out of the States. We've got to get our money out of the States. We want to invest in Israel. Where can we buy? We're not making Aliyah right now, but we, God willing, will make Aliyah. So your investments are safe here, I think, as well, from you know putting money into Israel. And somebody asked, quite a few people are asking about cost of living. Now, just to let everybody know, um, I deliberately did not have any real estate agents on this, even though I'm in the business, because I really wanted to be nobody soliciting anybody for business. This is just a platform to ask questions about the community. It is very affordable compared to the market in Jerusalem and Renana and all those places. You can buy and rent. It's very, from what I understand, and I'm in touch with the developer there. So if anybody wants to know about pricing and what's available, please PM me privately. Um, you can reach out to me on Facebook or on WhatsApp, and I will give you direct contacts of what's available. But maybe, Sarah, you want to share, like, I don't know if you're open, but like just some information. How have you been there? Well, Janet as well. What's an average? Obviously, it's an average of what a home will cost to rent, to buy. Give us a, oh, I, I know what it is because I've investigated, but I don't want it to come from me. I want it to come from you. So we, we found um, when we came to, to rent, there were, you know, we, 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 we arrived end of, right at the end of December. So it wasn't the prime time for people moving home. So there were actually only four homes available for rental at that time. So if you're looking, getting quick, um, there are already, we know of a lot of families coming from, more from America that are coming in the summer in, in August. Um, we, we're paying 8,000. I think we, we on one of the best streets, um, and I think we're very lucky, and I don't think it'll stay at 8,000. We've got a four, four bedrooms upstairs with a pajama lounge. We've got a full, uh, gigantic basement. Um, that's also, you know, some basements are divided into bit more, bit more rooms. We just have a very, very big open space. Um, and the, the land itself is 330 square meters. We've got a beautiful garden and patio. It's, it actually is, is bigger than our home in South Africa. So for all of you who know our home in South Africa, this is actually bigger if you add up all the floor, the floor space. This is a Jewish party? Yeah. Yeah, this is our neighbor's wall. <laughs> yeah, all, I, I won't show house. you the house because it's a mess, yeah. but it, it's really beautiful. All of the, when, when people talk about houses in Telmond, I, I think basically... You know, with the exception of a, probably a handful, all of the houses are Duma Mishpati. So it means there's two houses connected by a wall. Um, and there also is an increasing number of apartments in Telmond. So originally, I probably would have said to you rental for an apartment, rental for houses in Telmond is probably between about seven and 10,000 shekels a month. Um, and buying, again, obviously, depending on the size and condition of the house, um, probably between sort of you know, two and a half, three million, up to 12 million, depending on which house, I think is the range I've seen for houses in Telmond. Um, the, the, new, the new properties that, that, that are being built now are around the three million mark for four bedroom with basement, around three, 3.2, for, for very high quality, high, high quality of build and finish. There's also, what I want to tell everybody, it does seem a little bit high, but there are pre-sale opportunities now as well. So let's just say you're not ready to make Aliyah right now or you are living somewhere else. You may be able to buy on paper and some of these developments will only be ready in about two years. So they have like a 15% down payment that you can put down. I mean, we can discuss that later on, but it is more for bigger homes. There are apartments that you can get. I think if I'm right, anything from for a three bedroom, I think somebody said earlier about 6,000 to 8,000, depending on what it is. A little bit cheap, I, maybe. The other thing I for people. Oh, sorry, just Javi, let me just say, sorry, for I, people I, coming. Sorry, <laughs> go, go Javi. No, no, finish. It's okay, Janet. You go ahead. I, I was just going to say, for people coming from overseas in terms of general cost of living, I'm happy to share with Kim. I haven't updated it in a while. I'll have a look at it again. I actually prepared a while ago for a spreadsheet for someone thinking of making Aliyah with kind of a real family cost of living, including, you know, there is 
educational cost, you know, the cost of transport, cost of insurances, you know, average, obviously different people have different spend, but approximate cost of spend for like a monthly, you know, family food basket. Um, so I'm happy to share that with Kim, just to give people coming from, from overseas a sense of sort of what your rough monthly expenditure might be. So you factor in rent, there's a lot of other factors. Um, a very different, like I know the amount I spent on food in Australia was a lot more because kosher food was so expensive, whereas when I came to Israel, um, suddenly, you know, my income was less, but actually I was spending much less on food every month and entertaining um, compared to what I spent in Australia. And also remember, right. UK, your education compared to the States, I mean, you pay virtually like really nothing. I mean, there's certain mm -hmm. fees that you have to pay, but my friends in New York were paying $120,000 on education and that was without the transportation. So that's for you know, yeah, three kids, maybe, maybe. Three kids, <laughs> three children. Three children. I'll, I'll also be, yeah. say that in terms of what people are spending a month, there, you know, people here are across the spectrum within the socioeconomic kind of divide and people live to what they're able to spend. And I think people are quite comfortable with that. There's, you, you, you don't have that pressure of needing to live a certain way. If you don't have, you don't spend. Right. If you if you do have, um, spend on what you what you choose to spend it on. Um, you know, there are kids that go to lots of extramurals, kids that go to none. And I think it's very accepted that you you choose where you where you where you spend your money and and um, yeah, I could if I, I can just that, jump back to what amazing. Ilan was asking me about Yeshiva College. And I was thinking something that Liran and I had spoken about. In, in South Africa, there was such a need for a yeshiva college where you Do have you a place explain where, what that is? Do you want to explain? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, sure. Where there's a place that has to educate your child in an in a extremely wholesome way, that you have to give them a Jewish experience, you have to give them an, a, a feel of an Israeli experience, a love of, of Eretz Israel, a love of Am Yisrael, you, you know, and the school had to do all of that. If you take the need, those needs and bring it to Israel, the society itself is giving so much of that, that the pressure on the school to be teaching all of that and creating experiences for your children is much less. Um, it's just naturally is there all around you that your matzma'ut, your Yerushalayim, you have that Zionist, um, you know, that feel is, is all around you, the Chagim, it's all around you. And the shul, you know, it's, it's, it's really special. Every, you know, everybody's, it, it's, it's all around you. There isn't anybody who's not sharing in those experiences. And so what you're, what you're missing out on in terms of that private school, intensive, wholesome education, you're getting it in a different way. Can, can I just add to that? I remember, um, you know, kind of struggling with the education system here compared to the private um, Jewish school that my kids had gone to in Australia and I never forget I was sitting there groveling to my husband we were driving to Yerushalayim one day about the kids education and then my son who was in grade one at the time re read a sign and he said oh that's we were on the I can't even remember where it was it was somewhere near Modi'in and he pointed it out and he said oh that's this place and then proceeded to tell us a whole story that they'd learned in Navi about what happened in that place based on something they'd learned in Tanakh and I just thought this is why you bring your children to Israel because they don't need to sit there memorising it when they're in year nine and it's this kind of, you know, place that they've heard of that doesn't, sit, like we were driving past that place that they'd learnt about and just that's my sort of thought and, you know, it's just, like you say, it's everywhere here. Um, so, yes, in some ways the education system doesn't feel as sort of... Um, Adequate. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't feel compared to what they've come from in Chutzla Aret. But then, you know, I, I just see it all the time. What they actually come out with is so much richer. And I think another great example was when we sat around our uh, Lela Seder a few years ago with a whole lot of friends who'd come from overseas and their children are all going to these fantastic schools. The parents are paying a fortune for it. It looks like they're getting this great education. But then when we started sitting around and sharing ideas about the Haggadah, my kids, who were several years younger, had so much more to share and so much more passion in it. Um, and so I, they're sometimes thinking they're not getting the same education, but I'm listening to the words coming out of their mouth and thinking, no, they're actually getting it just fine. Dana, can I add to that? I, I'm actually an educator and I taught in, in schools in New York and in a school in New York. And um, it's like what Janet said, it's 
the at first you look at it and or like the other one said it as well you look at it and you say well the schools don't look as fancy or you know um they're are they as advanced this and that but then you just have to look at the population yeah we are the number one startup in the whole world right i mean it's amazing what comes out of israel so obviously the education has to be somewhat good to have all these genius people the other thing is in other countries the jews always rise to the top so of course it looks like our schools are the best our schools have everything all the advances and everything but if you think about it now it's like the harvard of everything now you have all the jews in one place so of course it's a struggle and it seems like oh my school is not as good as your school but that's just because everyone cares about education and that is a niche if somebody is interested in getting involved and and improving the system nobody's nobody's telling you not to every there's a place for that too and there's there's it's only going to get better the country's very young and it's already amazing and by the by the way they're ahead of america two years in math that's i know i can I teach, my kids i teach at the american school crazy i teach at the american Yuhud is, Yuhud is ahead of his class in math how's that and he yeah, went up yeah. half a year so <laughs> I don't know. Did I mean? Did I mean it that way? I'm trying to think. No, I found the maths was good with Yeshiva College. Yeshiva College has done well. Lower year. Somebody's asking as well. Um, if there's anybody here that wants to ask questions, please. I'm totally. I mean, we're going to have to end the call probably soon because it's going to cut us off. But um, is there anybody that actually works? In Talmud, that people have careers within the community? Is there opportunities? I mean, before COVID. Well, people work from home. I don't think there's, there's not really any kind of industry or high tech parks just here in Telmond. Um, there's no companies that have offices here just outside, like literally just on the edge of the We're very close to um, a bit that's at Ranana, which has a massive Microsoft office and Docs office. Um, who else? Is there? There's a couple of big high tech centers there, and also in Netanya, um, like the kind of the edge. They call it the industrial part of Netanya, which is also about ten minutes drive from our house. There's a growing high tech um, area there as well. Um, so there's quite a few startups, um, and and more than startups, kind of scale up type companies um, in Netanya that also about 10 minutes drive away. Um, so there is some industry close. There's nothing exactly until, like, you know, unless you want to um, probably run a store or something like that, there's no industry itself within Telmond. There is the ability if you, uh, for example, we have someone in the community is a physiotherapist, uh, I'm a life coach, so please God, I'll be starting to work from home as well. And, uh, you know, bringing people in that way and also able to work in other cities, part you know, some days of the week and at home from other days of the week. Okay, there's somebody just asking questions. Sorry, I just put here. Is there, I have a son going to grade 10. Is there any English schools near there? Are they like just English? I don't know. There's, there's an English only school. It's the American school, but it's not a Jewish school. It's an international school and it's very expensive. It's kind of American pricing. Um, in terms of English, there's, there's no other, like there's no English schools, but there's schools that have a very large English population. So um, like the school that my son goes to and where Javi's son went to, um, Technologi in Ranana, they've got a, a massive amount of kids that have come from Anglo families. So a child who comes here as an Ole, um, only speaking English, will settle in just fine in a place like that. And then and so, extra classes and extra pun, whatever makes you to help the kids. And also in their final years of school, they get credit. Um, so there's like points that they get towards their final scores. They get like accreditation because, you know, they take into account the fact that they've come from an English speaking country. Um, it helps them with their English and also they get um, kind of bonus points to help them with where they through. Okay, I heard our, our, it's giving me a prompt here that it's going to end soon. Somebody's just asking about a Sephardi community. Now, I know you mentioned in the beginning there's a mixture between Ashkenazi and Sephardi. Is there an actual Sephardi shul and an actual Ashkenazi shul separate or a few shtiblach? Like, what's the... I hope we don't get cut off. Sorry, there's lots of... Um, I, got, I got cut off. <laughs> oh, hi, Javi. Okay. Oh, we got sorry, cut, I got cut, cut off. off. I'm sorry. Sorry, Brett, wherever you are. Sorry. 
Okay. It's probably about another 10 Stibla. or 12. Svardi Stibla. <laughs> okay. So what I want to do is, because I can see it's going to cut us off. I'm so sorry. Um, it's, uh, what I want to do is I want to offer on the bottom, because I don't even know some of you. I'm going to put my number on the Zoom thing quickly. If you want to jot it down, I don't know if it comes up. Tell me if you all get it. On the message, you should get my number. Add me onto your WhatsApp. And um, I will be in, if anybody wants to, if it's okay, Sarah and Javi and Janet and everybody, if anybody wants to connect with you, are you okay with me giving out your information? I'm yes. happy to put it in the message below. And, and my husband, my husband wasn't able to join. He's on a call, so he um, said to offer his phone number as well. And he, he's helped a, a number of people get jobs and do things. He's a businessman, right. but he has a lot of connections. And he is, yeah. He, if you think I'm enthusiastic, he's very also, enthusiastic. Also, I want to encourage people. You know, like it's all networking. You know, when I talk business, I talk, any everybody knows I'm in real estate. I talk to everybody. I just got a new client from being in the taxi and saying, hey, I'm in real estate. Oh, I have an apartment to sell. You got to network yourself. This is just in general. So you coming to Talmud, let's talk. Let's talk about opportunities. If any of you, Janet, Sarah, Javi, thank you for, if you know job opportunities, sure. the biggest fear for people coming, and I understand it, is Panasa. How am I going to make money? How am I going to support my family? And, and I always say to people, that it's, it's, it is scary, and everybody wants to feel safe. But at the end of the day, I just feel that if we're going to, you know, struggle, rather struggle in Eretz Israel than anywhere else. And I'm also very happy to put out your so what's number zero five two. Anything you want to send me, I'm happy no, to send people. Uh, two, two, there are so two, many two, job opportunities. There are job opportunities. The other day I put on a list. I'm looking for, I just wanted to see what was going on. I said, who has jobs? Come on, tell me what's going on in the market. Bang, bang, bang. There were 10 opportunities. On my, on my email, I mean, on my uh, Facebook, from everything, from translators to engineers to financial advisors, there are opportunities. It's just about connecting and making the shidduch, putting people together. So it's just about, you know, word of mouth and getting and helping where you can with people. So don't be afraid. I really believe when there's a will, there's a way. I think Taman sounds like an unbelievable opportunity for many people and a really warm and open community. And um, I just thank everybody for coming on. As I said, this is very, you know, chilled and no formal thing going on yet. For real estate opportunities, there is a developer I'm in contact with. If anybody wants to contact me privately, I can tell you about opportunities going on in the market. Uh, and that's basically it. Does anybody want to ask questions before we sign off? Yes, there are secular schools. Lee, there is secular schools. We There's spoke secular, about uh, uh, primary school as well as a high school. Okay. Um, and there are lots of Anglos, people that couldn't be on the call tonight, that I'm sure they'll be able to, to help you. And if this is a community that you think will work for you, be in touch with me on WhatsApp or on Facebook, however you want to connect. And um, I thank everybody for their time. And uh, it sounds like a great place. And everybody should be healthy and well. And hug Samer and have a good a good week. Any last questions? Hold on. Um, there are lots of primary school. Okay, you're writing here. There's more people trying to come on, but the call's gonna go, gonna go off. And, but bottom uh, line, whether whether the people come to Talmud or not, they should just come to Israel. Absolutely. <laughs> My whole thing is I, I tell people Bottom not like here, Hashem's closing down the diaspora. You gotta get on the boat. So we're waiting for you. So come home. Have a great night, everybody, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Take care. God bless thank everybody. You. Thank you. Take care. Bye.